Hey Quartzkazat, it's me, Carrie Huang. I'm the creator of Scale of the Universe, and my twin brother Michael and I own the website htwins.net where we host Scale of the Universe. Anyway, I've been a big fan of your channel for a while, not only because it's educational, but also because your animations are on a level of quality unmatched anywhere else on the internet in my opinion. I say this as a fellow YouTube animator with my own web series by the way. So when I saw your recent video about the largest stars in the universe, and I heard you guys shout out our website at the end, I was super excited. The app is inspired by the Scale of the Universe website by the Huang twins that we spent a lot of time with when it came out years ago, and felt that it was finally time to create a Wait But Why and Kurzgesagt version. So today, I'm making this video to sort of introduce myself to anybody who might know about my Scale of the Universe application, but not know who I am as a person. Without further ado, hello, I'm Carrie, and earlier this year, I graduated from Stanford University with a bachelor's degree in computer science. <laughs> But back in middle school, I was obsessed with astronomy and programming silly computer games. So when my 7th grade science teacher showed us that famous 1977 documentary called Powers of Ten, where the camera seamlessly zooms from a family picnic to intergalactic space to subatomic particles, I just knew I had to make my own interactive version. That's where the first version of Scale of the Universe came from. And to my utter surprise, it went viral on Newgrounds in January 2010. Over the next two years, I worked on an improved, more professional version that ended up in a lot of cool places. Here's raw footage of me using that second version of the scale of the universe. I made it during my freshman year of high school in February 2012, and it was also made with Macromedia Flash 8. It has about 220 objects, ranging from galaxies to stars to animals to subatomic particles and everything in between. The largest one is the observable universe, the smallest one is the Planck length, and the one I get the most comments about is definitely the Minecraft world. For each of these objects, I wrote a 3-5 to five sentence description about the object, and I used varying levels of professionalism versus playfulness, and trust me, I got a lot of complaints about how silly some of my descriptions were, like the water molecules. Regardless, that was that. Next, with the help of dozens of generous volunteers who reach out via email, we were able to translate the scale of the universe into 17 other languages, which made it more accessible to people all over the world. And then a couple years after that, my brother graciously ported it to iOS, so that you could look at scale of the universe on your iPhone. Unfortunately, after that, I couldn't work on development of a third version, because one, I just got busy with high school and college schoolwork, and two, both old versions were made with Macromedia Flash 8, which the internet was quickly abandoning, and three, I didn't have any resources to ask for outside help because Google shut down our AdSense account for over two years due to vague, unjustified reasons caused by Scale of the Universe's page being visited by people all over the world, which led to us losing out on this much money. And in fact, a few months ago, I wrote this ridiculously long script talking about that whole fiasco. But I don't want this video to just be wallowing in pity, so let's move on to the happy stuff. Anyway, I saw you partnered up with Tim Urban, who writes that blog, Wait But Why, that I also love because it's given me so many existential fears. And I saw you guys made that new app called Universe in a Nutshell, which also compares the sizes of various objects in our universe and describes them in detail. I think it's really awesome to see more versions of this type of content online, because one, more people will be educated about the true vastness of the universe we live in using easily digestible visual techniques. And two, my scale of the universe was already falling out of date. For example, it still claims that Vy Canis Majoris is the largest star known to humankind, which was true in 2012, but it's not true in 2020. So it's a relief to see that somebody else that I look up to has made a more modern version of the app, with information that I trust is more up to date with the current knowledge of the scientific community. So congratulations, Kortzkazan on that accomplishment. With that all being said, I do want to discuss the updates that have been happening on my side of the world. First off, my friend Matthew and I have ported our Scale of the Universe, the one that sits on h1s.net, into Pixie.js, which is a flexible 2D WebGL renderer that's more modern than the decaying Flash player. That way, teachers and students alike who have used Scale of the Universe in the past can still use Scale of the Universe now in their modern internet browsers, without having to deal with all the 
those annoying warnings you'd usually get from running a flash file. Hopefully this update can pull our website aceons.net into the modern era, and pull it from fourth to first on the Google search query for Scale the Universe. Well, we'll see what happens. In addition, I also want to say that I'm open to trying new ventures in this sort of visual comparison tool genre. For example, as far back as 2011, I had ideas to make a scale of the history of the universe, which would show time scales of certain events to scale, instead of sizes. And I also planned on making a scale of population, a scale of temperature, and much much more. I even considered creating a sort of collaborative portal for SOTU, where scientists of different fields could submit new information about new objects, or update old and incorrect information. I did realize it was a big undertaking, but it was my goal to create an educational tool that could be verified by actual experts. Instead of it just being random information that a 14 year old kid found during his googling and research on Wikipedia. However, like I said earlier, high school started getting really busy around that time. I mean, four AP classes and one honors all at the same time was not fun. So all of those Scale of the Universe projects sat on the back burner for years and years. But now, it's 2020, and I'm officially out of college. I'm an internet-y person, and you guys are also internet-y people. And all of you viewers watching this video, you're internet-y people too. So if anybody out there wants to collaborate with me, and work together to create this new wave of visual metric comparison tools, just let me know. Especially if you're an expert in some scientific field for some objects that show up in Scale of the Universe. I'll put my Twitter account in the description and you can DM me there. Alone, I can't do much, but together, we can create some awesome educational tools.